There you go. How we doing, folks? <clears throat> it's good to be back with you guys again. Did everybody here last time when I was here in the summer? Okay. Since we are recording, and I've been told I have to use the microphone, it's a little different for me. As you might remember, I'm a bit of a pacer, and I like to walk around quite a bit. Well, you can grab it loose and carry it around. Like a rock stand. So I go with the stand. Don't drop, don't drop the microphone. So, uh, really enjoyed last time uh, I was here with you guys, and Marilyn invited me back to talk a little bit about our Black Friday ad and some of the gadgets and things that we are going to have on sale for this upcoming shopping event. Um, let's just whip through a few slides here real quick. So what we're going to cover today, we're going to talk about 2018 Black Friday deals, the when, where, how, and what uh, concerning some of these deals we're going to go through. I'm going to hit on a few product categories, uh, some of the major ones that they are traditionally shopped for. We're going to talk about some TV stuff, um, and then some of the up-and-coming product categories. I know we touched on smart home and home security last time. Uh, some of those things, we'll see a few slides on those. Um, generally, I think I, uh, I screenshotted several pages of the ad, so we're going to have like some full pages of our Black Friday ad up. I will talk about a few products on there, some of my experiences with them, some of what my favorites are of the ones we have up there. But uh, as of right now, the ad isn't 100% finalized. We're already at 52 pages for an ad for just a five-day shopping event. So we're not going to cover every single page of the ad today. I don't think we have the room for that long. So we're going to whip through a few of these slides. And then obviously at any point during any of this, raise your hand. I like to be interactive and answer questions as we go along. So at any time, hand up. I'll recognize you and uh, we'll have some interaction about anything at any point. So yes, yeah, so we're going to cover some most popular products and categories, and then we'll do a little Q&A at the end if we have any questions left at the end. Uh, Bruce talked about me a little bit. Um, I'm not a nuclear physicist. <laughs> you guys have that to look forward to uh, next week. But I do have a, a very background. I was in software development and building websites in the mid-90s when everybody was just hearing about the World Wide Web. Um, a community website that I launched uh, with a couple business partners in 1997, LorraineCounty.com. When, when we launched that website, for the first eight years we, were, we had that site up, we got more traffic to our site daily than both local Lorain County newspapers. The Journal and the Chronicle combined, we had more traffic than them to the mid-2000s, I believe. And then I went and tried to work at golf school for a while just because I wanted to hang out in Florida and Mexico and other places. And I was a PR liaison for Lorain County Computer Users Group as well. So let's get right into the, uh, some of the details, the when, where, why of Black Friday. So we consider it a shopping event at Best Buy, you know, as most sales in retail, you know, uh, President's Day sale is not on President's Day anymore. It's you know ten days long, so Black Friday for Best Buy and most of retail covers Thanksgiving Day that Thursday. A lot of retailers are open that day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then into Cyber Monday. So we consider that block our sh big shopping event, Black Friday into Cyber Monday. And then, just so you guys know, this is this will be not only my store in Avon, but these hours will represent, I believe, all our local stores. Uh, the Elyria store is a little bit different because it's attached to the mall, but if you shop at North Olmsted, if you shop at the Parma store, even if we go south to Strongsville, these hours, especially Thursday, Friday, Saturday, are going to hold for every, uh, every store locally. Um, this will be my sixth year with Best Buy. This will be my sixth Black Friday. Um, and the sixth time I've had to work on Thanksgiving. 
We are getting close to not opening the store on Thanksgiving as uh, we do a lot more business through BestBuy.com now, but we still have such a demand for customers who want to come in and buy cheap things that day that you know we, we haven't made the business decision yet that we can keep the store closed. And obviously, hint, 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 BestBuy.com is always open. You don't want to buy crowds, so there'll be a lot of deals, maybe a couple handfuls of deals that are exclusive in-store only type things, but the bulk of what you'll see in, in the pages of the ad that we talk about today, and then as you go to BestBuy.com and sift through the ad, the bulk of what you see will be available to purchase on BestBuy.com. No lines there. So the where and how, obviously, all Best Buy retail locations. Note the parentheses. <laughs> I mean, it, Lorraine County, one and a half percent cheaper. I mean, if you're, the bigger that purchase goes up, you can save significant dollars on uh, less sales tax in Lorraine County. And obviously, I just noted BestBuy.com. And then any questions about anything, you know, you can actually call and talk to people. You will have to get through a few prompts, but 88 Best Buy, that's our corporate number. Uh, they can assist through any shopping questions, shopping needs, anything you have pre or post sale. If you uh, do not want to go to the website or come into a store. All right, so we're through all that. We're going to jump right into some of the products, some of the ads. And we're going to start with TVs. That is by far our biggest seller. Um, we have three door busters that I'm going to get to here in just a second. Uh, just a little note, like about my store, what, what it's like for that Black Friday, for that shopping event. The three days of Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we will see 10,000 customers in the store in those three days. Uh, typically for us on weekdays, I get about 500 people. On Saturdays, 850, 950-ish, and on Sundays, maybe 650, 700 customers. Those are our averages. So we will get nearly a month worth of customers through our doors in about three days. And we will probably, even though the company doesn't want me to talk about, you know, how much we sell, we will do in those three days about $1.1 million in sales. So starting out, home theater, the big three door busters, and then for door busters, those are the ones that are obviously in store only, right? These are some of these deals you're not gonna be able to log on to bestbuy.com. Uh, you actually have to show up. In my experience in the last uh, six years, we don't really have as many people at waiting in line or camping anymore. I saw that a little bit when I worked at the North Homestead store. We did have some campers for 36 hours beforehand, but, but there'll be people there at noon on Thanksgiving Day standing in line to, uh, to get some of these ticketed items. So the big three for the TVs, we have a 70 inch LG 4K, normally $1,000, it's 300 off. 70 inch TV for $700. I worked in, uh, in the home theater and TV section for about a year in my career, and that was five years ago, and 70 inch TVs were $4,000 just five years ago. So an amazing deal on a very large TV. Uh, the 65 inch uh, Samsung 4K ultra high def is obviously going to be $600. And the little Toshiba with the, I was wrong, I said Roku with the Amazon Fire TV that's built in, which is kind of a smart operating system for that. Um, 4K. Everybody kind of familiar with 4K and ultra high def when we're talking about televisions? It's just the resolution that's kind of the next step as we went from standard definition to HD. Uh, the industry, not only hardware, but how uh, the signal that gets pushed through is going to be moving from high definition to 4K ultra high definition. 
in general, it has four times the number of pixels in the screen as a standard 1080p TV. So that's a much sharper picture. Yes, sir. What I wonder about some of these door busters is you're going to get there, there's a whole mob, you pay, first have problems finding your place to park, then you're standing in line. And then you get in and you've only got four of these things and they got sold out before you even got to the door. Correct. Um, it's not pictured in this part of the ad, but if you do, so if you do look into our ad, once you get on BestBuy.com, you will see reserved limited or reserved quantities. So stores will guarantee to have 15, 20, 25 of these TVs. I promise you will have, I think we have at least 40 of each one. Yeah. And, and as I mentioned before, you know, for, for the door buster, the, the number of people waiting outside has decreased every year in my experience at Best Buy. I don't see the campers out there anymore. You know, we will have people early Thanksgiving Day standing in line waiting to get a ticket for one of these items. That's another thing that we do. We will, uh, before the store opens, we will come out and interact with the line of people. So we'll come and say, hey, what are you waiting for? 70 inch TV. We'll give you a ticket. You will be guaranteed one. So that's about it. Stores do it differently. We usually do it about an hour and a half to an hour before opening. So we open at 5 p.m. on uh, that Thanksgiving. We will be out there between 3.30 and 4 and talking to any customers in line. At that point, if you get a ticket for the item you want, you can go back and sit in your car because you're guaranteed that item. So, but to your point, yes, there are, uh, I do not have a thousand of each of these in the store and no stores will work will they are limited quantities so some other quick uh, some other quick deals on some TVs as you see we've got a lot of Samsung and LG these are some of the larger models I believe these are all 55 and above on this slide absolutely um, of these I will have to say my favorite is the LG OLED. It's going to be on the bottom left, or yep, yeah, your bottom left of the screen. Um, that TV, so OLED is a little bit different technology than even the TVs we have now or we're used to having now. OLED is a similar technology to what's in your smartphone screen or your iPad screen where no light is being pushed through the screen to actually deliver the picture. The pixels are controlled individually as to when to be on or off and what color is on or off. That lends itself to amazing contrast, meaning blacker blacks and whiter whites and a better spectrum of color. So of the ones we have on the screen, I mean, the, the Sony is an excellent model as well, but that OLED in terms of the technology it uses and the range of color is uh, is my favorite product on here. The other big benefit of that one is its refresh rate. I have some notes on the side here about you know picking TVs 4K versus 1080p or screen size for viewing distance. Refresh rate is a big one. It's the number of times the screen refreshes inside the second. Um, TVs that have light push through the LED screens, they're a little more limited to the refresh versus the OLED model. Um, that they do not have a recorded refresh rate for it. I don't want to say it's infinite or limitless, but it is not recorded. So what that means is motion on the screen is perfectly clear. Chris, what's the screen size, the optimal screen size for, for viewing distance? <clears throat> Sure, absolutely, and um, it's changed a little bit uh, with the 4K models. Um, the traditional 1080p's, you want it to be two, uh, well, 55 inch TV. You want it to be between eight and ten feet. Okay, and then as we as we go up ten inches, we're going back another. We're, we're going to 55 is going to be the baseline, right? So eight to ten feet for 55. As we go up 10 inches, we can move that back another four feet. So we're like 10 to 13 on the 65 inch. 
And again, with the 1080p, with that screen resolution, how many people have gotten too close to a really big TV and it kind of blurs out, right? So with the 4K models, because it has four times as many pixels, um, it changes a little. I mean, you can get a 75 inch TV and put your nose on it and really very, you get very little pixel blur. So the recommended viewing distance, 55, 8 to 10 feet. Um, and then we can even work forward with there. So if we're talking like a 40 inch TV, LED screen, 6 to 8 feet. So we did all the big TVs. Let's talk about a few small TVs too. We can't leave them out. Um, bedroom gifting, great things like that. From the first page, again, that $130, 43 inch Fire TV is obviously going to be my very, very best deal. But the uh, <clears throat> some of even the very small Insignia TVs, a 32 inch TV for $90. Um, again, in terms of like relative price where, uh, where technology measures up, uh, the house I live in now I bought nine years ago and I bought a 27 inch LED TV and it cost me $300 and now we have a 32 inch for $90. So, yes? Are people still using those as monitors for their computers? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, General computing needs, for sure. Um, a big push with Best Buy now, and we're seeing it, is PC gaming is making a huge comeback. And when I say PC gaming, I don't mean card games or solitaire or anything like that, but I mean the same video games that are being played on your Xbox and PlayStation consoles. Um, in a case like that, if you are going to be gaming a computer monitor with a high refresh rate is going to be much better for you. But in, in terms of bang for your buck, if, if you're just doing general computing functions, checking email, playing with spreadsheets, uninstalling, reinstalling Windows four or five times, um, one of these TVs will work very, very well for you. Yes, sir. Absolutely does. Sure, absolutely. Um, so in general, when we talk about smart, that means direct internet connectivity. So if we talk about a smart TV, it connects to your wireless internet the same way your computer would, your phone would, your tablet would. They all can be hardwired as well, so they all have an ethernet board, so you don't necessarily have to connect wirelessly. But anyway, the, the smart features imply direct internet connectivity. The biggest benefit and the main benefit of that is obviously bringing content to the TV. Um, Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, some of many of these streaming services that we're uh, familiar with. Huge push, uh, just a little quick anecdote. Um, I think the Best Buy's data shows that over the last five years, our customers have reported to us that over 10 million people in the last five years have cut the cord, so to speak, gotten rid of their traditional cable provider, their traditional satellite provider, and opted to look at options for streaming their content. You know, signing up for Netflix rather than paying Spectrum Cable or, you know, whomever that local is. Um, so that makes the smart TV more prevalent, kind of a, a bit of a better value. You know, you don't have to buy an additional device to bring that internet content into the TV. Uh, and at this point, I would really think of them with a smart TV <clears throat> when we see things like Roku and or uh, Amazon Fire TV. Those are basically operating systems. So the smart TV, you work off of apps, not necessarily programs like a traditional computer, but more like a tablet or a phone where apps get installed. And when you see things like a Roku or Fire TV, that is basically an operating system. That's what's going to be used to download the apps, sign in, and bring your content over. Some of the earlier models did enable some web browsing features, but I think in the end of it, because 
the introduction of 4K and needing a bigger signal and TVs getting much bigger. The processing power in the TV is now more devoted to the refresh rate and bringing the signal to the screen versus any kind of web browsing or computing activity. Early versions of smart TVs did it. You, know, you could get on a web browser and you could google.com and dig, 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 dig. But the industry has moved away from that and they're focusing on bringing your Netflix to the screen and making it look really good. Yeah. What kind of what kind of input device do you have? Do you have a little tiny uh, remote and you've got a punch in on there, or how do you input stuff? Couple options. <coughs> um, so the the ones that I mentioned, like Roku and Amazon Fire TV, they are obviously apps that live in the smart features of the TV. The other option you have. And I have a good example of that here. I have a Fire TV app on my phone. And you can put one on the tablet too. So in the interest of wanting to search for some content, rather than stumbling around with the remote and trying to spell something out, I can launch the app and pull up the keyboard on the screen of the phone and conduct searches that way. Uh, so that's probably the, the most efficient way to search for things. Most of the rest of it is menu driven where it's up, down, left, right. But if you want to search and find content, partner applications for your phone or tablet work very, very well. What about privacy concerns with uh, smart TVs and recording uh, ambient voices, et cetera? Sure. Um, I believe I touched on it a little bit when I was here last time, but, it, but it's similar to the smart voice assistants. You know, um, they are listening for you to talk to them, to look for trigger words so you can tell them what to do. Um, TVs are similar. You know, there are, and just like any app or piece of software you install, they all flick through, and I agree the terms of service, they be. There is certainly information. I know Samsung had some issues a couple years ago with their terms of service and their smart TVs about what data they were collecting on their users. Um, I can't speak a ton in that area, but the concerns are the same. You know, the concerns with smart TV, a voice assistant for the phone in the pocket, they all are the same. Um, some of, I'm, I'm, it was earlier this year when I believe we all had to change the terms of service for some of our social media accounts because of the laws in Europe that changed, right? Um, I don't think it got to the point with things like Netflix or YouTube, you know, some of the main apps that you would use to bring content to your TV. I don't remember changing my terms of service with them as I did with, say, my Facebook account. But there are those same implications, absolutely. Okay, hey, streaming media devices. <clears throat> so, if you do not have a smart TV, you can make it a smart TV fairly easily. Um, some of the names I've mentioned already, the Roku, the Amazon Fire TV, typically these devices, as you can see, they are 40 to 50% off, you know, a hundred dollar, uh, Roku piece of hardware is going to sell for half off. The Chromecasts are typically 40 to 50 percent off as well. Again, these are devices that work with HD high definition TVs. You cannot plug them in the HDMI port. They connect to Wi-Fi, and if you don't have a smart TV, they bring the content in for you. The interesting one I like on this page really is the Nvidia Shield. That is a raw Android operating system. It doesn't have a lot of the different layers that Roku and the Amazon Fire TV have. It's a bit of a raw Android system, so for one who is able to customize and play with things like that, that NVIDIA Shield enables you to do those things. You can actually uh, alter the code of this operating system. All right, so partnering up with TVs, we got home audio as well. And does anybody have sound bars, surround sound, anything like that in their house? 
Yeah, it used to be, you know, it was kind of a luxury to create that home theater type experience, but as we've seen over time, as TVs are getting bigger, they're also getting thinner. What has been sacrificed intentionally is the sound quality that comes with your TV, with the speakers included. So the industry has turned into providing external sound in the form of a bar or some simple speakers. Uh, the top three choices you see on there are Sonos. And how I got some of these slides, just to give you information on that, um, as I toggled through the ad, I sorted by popularity and customer rating. So the Sonos came up the top of the list for, uh, for this slide specifically. But the Sonos is an interesting one in that it's networked audio. Um, a lot of the sound bars traditionally you know, you run a cable from your audio output on your TV into the sound bar, and it has to be hardwired. Uh, Sonos, as with many other things we're going to talk about, connects to home Wi-Fi. Uh, so it can not only take the sound from your TV and uh, play it that way, but you can play music, both streaming or anything you have saved on your computer. Uh, you have to download the Sonos software or app. But it can be controlled, again, from your phone, from your uh, tablet, mobile device, or your PC. It is super flexible. Uh, you see we have the bar pictured here, but in the top middle, that is called the Sonos Play One. That's their kind of small introductory speaker. Um, pretty little dynamic speaker, that thing is. It's, uh, it is sealed to keep out moisture and dust and debris, so that's something that can be used in, say, a bathroom where it gets real steamy. It can be used outdoors, now not directly uh, in the elements, but it will survive the change in temperature outdoors. And for the Sono system, if you have multiple speakers in multiple rooms, so you have one in a bedroom, one in the kitchen, you can control them individually. So you can have one piece of content, say a song or whatever, playing on the kitchen, and you can have audio from the TV playing on the one in the uh, bedroom. So it's networked audio, it connects to your Wi-Fi, there's no uh, limits in terms of distance like we have with Bluetooth speakers that make a one-to-one -one connection with, uh, with a phone or another device. As soon as you walk away from it, you lose your connection do not have those same issues with the Sonos. And again, the, even the sound bars here in the $120 to $200 range, as compared to the audio quality that's built into the TVs that are sold today, they are 20 times better. Are they the absolute best sound or best piece of audio you ever heard? I'm not gonna tell you they are, but they do a much better job than, uh, than what is being put in the TVs from the manufacturers today. All right, we're gonna run through smart home devices real quick. I think I may have, uh, may have shared this fact with you guys last time, but again, this is company data, but by 2022, Best Buy predicts that, you know, our average customer is gonna have 50 devices connected to the home Wi-Fi system. Our average customer has 14 right now, so we expect in four years that we're going to put 36 more things in everybody's house that's going to be attached to Wi-Fi. And just some of the deals, uh, one of the big things, most popular was last year, we, uh, we foresee it to be again this year are the voice assistants. You know, your Alexa from Amazon and the Google Assistant, uh, the Google Home from Google. A lot of these things, that the next generation will see that uh, some of these actually have built-in screens now. So not only do they interact with voice, but if you have wireless cameras set up, you can actually, through your voice assistant, call for different pictures and different views on different cameras in your house. You can obviously ask things like the calendar, the weather, things like that. So we've taken the next step. Not only we're using the voice assistants, we're 
integrating other content. That it's not only talking back to you, but it is visually bringing you information as well. A lot of these things you will see, I think a couple of them are represented on here, but there are a lot of bundle and combination deals for Black Friday. So you buy, I think, uh, the Amazon Gen 2 Echo Dot, or if you, if you buy an Amazon product, you will get that little smart book for free. Um, there are a couple others where if you buy certain items, you will get Echo Dots for free. So we have a lot of bundle deals, and these are very popular gifts in the 20 to $50 range. We will probably sell over a thousand voice assistant units in the, uh, in the three days from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, just out of our store. And we have almost that many to sell. I've talked to them in every corner of the building so far. So computing and tablet devices, uh, I think our biggest seller here, and we're gonna get, in a few slides later, we're actually gonna get away from product categories and move to brand families. So we're gonna see a page about Apple, we're gonna see a page about Google, a page about Amazon, a page, uh, slide with Samsung, um, all companies that uh, Best Buy has tremendous partnerships with. But my favorite deal on this guy is in your top right, the HP Spectre, that's $500 off. It's a, normally a $1,600 $1, machine. It is a two-in-one with a touch screen, so traditional laptop computing device, flips around, touch screen tablet with a stylus or pen. Now they're calling them because they're a little bit more than a stylus. Notice I didn't pull any of the ads off the pages, so bottom right. Iris uh, removal, down back up, total tech support. We'll talk about that in a second. I'm not leaving without doing a few sales pitches. <clears throat> okay, and this slide is slightly incorrect. So, not computing and tablet devices, but audio. Um, headphones and speakers and the like. We talked about the network audio earlier. Um, not a huge gifting thing, the network audio. That's something most people buy for themselves, to be honest. But the smaller Bluetooth speakers, portable, rechargeable, uh, can not only be used to play music, many of them now, for instance, the JBL on the top right, that can also, if paired up with your phone, can serve as a speaker phone. So when you have a Bluetooth connection with that, you can literally make a phone call. It has a microphone built in, so you can have that on in the middle of a table and much better audio quality, obviously, than any small or mobile device. Big fan of the JBLs. What not pictured here is one level up. It's called the JBL Charge 3. Uh, it's standard retail is $150. We'll probably be selling it for $100 around Black Friday and most of the holiday. Uh, my favorite wireless uh, Bluetooth speaker for two reasons. One, it has a huge battery. So you get a much longer play time often 15 hours off one charge if you're playing at a moderate volume. With any of these devices, any uh, wireless rechargeable speaker type devices, the louder you play them, the harder that battery works, the faster it drains. So any package that you read that says eight hours play time, 10 hours play time, they are quoting you that number at average volume. The louder you play it, the quicker the battery goes. So, the other one in the JBL family, the Charge 3, much bigger battery, and also serves as a charging station. So you can actually charge your cell phone off of the speaker. That's how big the battery is. So what my favorite gift in the 100 to $200 range, I think I've purchased 
five of them in the last three years to give away as gifts. Another very, very, very popular gifting category is wearable technology. Um, do we have Fitbit users in the room already? Okay, we have Fitbit. Um, in addition to Fitbit, we uh, this is our most popular fitness tracker, but some of these devices are starting to actually work together and provide what we call the smartwatch features and also track, uh, track the fitness. So um, the Apple Watch is actually rated as by far the most accurate in tracking your steps and movements and activity time. Um, so Fitbit does a very, very good job. The Apple Watch, I think, beat it by 2% in one of the independent studies that was done in terms of accuracy. And even then, I think these things are only 80% accurate in judging your total activity, your number of steps per day. So we have a uh, huge standard deviation there. <clears throat> but the Fitbits are going to be uh, the Fitbit Ionic, which is their kind of their top dog per se. It is a huge combination of fitness tracker and smartwatch. Um, does all the things you would expect a smartwatch device to do. It interacts with your phone. You can get alerts for messages, things like that. Um, it also does some advanced training things. Say you were training for a triathlon and you had to measure splits in your training and time yourself on certain parts of your run or your swim, uh, the Fitbit Ionic is able to do that. I was wondering if any of these devices, these wearable things, are, are aiming for the uh, old, uh, maybe more mature population that is interested in more health things rather than fitness tracking. I just wonder if any of those are going that direction. Uh, absolutely. And Fitbit, they were one of the first, I believe, I'm not going to be exact in my dates. Three years ago, they first introduced heart rate monitoring in their Fitbits. Um, that they are actually monitoring far more accurately than your steps, believe it or not. Your Fitbit can, can get a better gauge of your heart rate than how far or how many steps you walk in a day. Um, oxygen levels, SpO2, I know there are sensors on the back of phones, you know, your fingerprint sensor can actually give you a decent idea of your SpO2 rating in terms of the amount of oxygen in the blood. Um, but yes, that's wearable technology is certainly going in that direction, providing real-time health-related information and in what's going on with the body real time. Um, relating to that, Best Buy recently, meaning sometime in the middle of this year, we purchased a company called Great Call. Now, Great Call is a cell phone provider, and they provide the service for the jitterbug cell phone. So one area that Best Buy is really moving into is this health-connected space. We purchased a company that owns Jitterbug, so we basically own Jitterbug now. Um, and that is going to be pairing up with another offering that we have, and we're not going to see any slides about it today because it's not really product-related in terms of deals for Black Friday, but um, we call it Assured Living. So we talk about some of the smart home options we have, like lights and all these fancy doodads. What assured living is, if, uh, if you want to monitor someone's movements in the home, we have experts who come, they walk through your home, they see how uh, you know, your elderly loved one may spend the day, what chair they're gonna be in all day, and what trips they're gonna make throughout the house. Sent not, and this is not even with only cameras, but sensors are placed in cushions of chairs, uh, sensors that trip doorways, so you can literally get alerts on the movements 
of someone without having to see them, without having that huge intrusion of privacy and having a camera on them all the time, but you can certainly monitor someone's whereabouts and their movements throughout the day. And it can also be set up such that alerts can be sent. You know, if say uh, somebody crosses the sensor into the bathroom and then they don't cross it again within a half an hour, an alert can be sent similar to the uh, similar to the one touch alert we can do for the jitterbug phone, and you can make it on a 911 call can be made from that house. Yeah. So uh, Best Buy is going to be moving into that space, very similar to the wearable technology, but again, real time health and wellness information. Some really good deals on small appliances as well. Um, we have a KitchenAid mixer, full retail, $500. We're selling for $220. Unbelievably good deal. Um, and I'm a big fan of the Ninja Blender on the top right. I probably use it four or five times a week. Uh, not pictured, so we, does anybody have a robot vacuum yet? Anybody as lazy as I am have a robot vacuum yet? Okay. So these are some of the uh, some of the options. You have a robot vacuum again can be controlled from an app. You can just one touch it. It bounces around your house. It remembers where things are. Uh, when mine is done running, it sends me a text message, and I actually get a map of the area that it cleaned. So I get a report on everywhere it went in my house, how long it ran, and all that fun stuff. The next generation of these, so what's pictured here are just the vacuums themselves. One drawback is it doesn't have a huge tank, right? I have a couple dogs, so I'm chasing my robot vacuum around, having to, you know, pop the tank and pull the fur out about every 15 minutes. The next generation of these literally has its own dumping station. It parks itself, empties itself. Oh, good. And then goes back on the road and starts vacuuming again. It is wild. Wild. Not pictured there, but for sale, bestbuy.com, iRobot, $900 retail. Other great deals of note, I don't know if anybody has Dyson vacuums. I love Dyson products as well. Um, anytime you can save a couple hundred bucks off of Dyson, that's a brand that is <clears throat> very, very solid through the years. I know we were having some discussions about how things, TVs and things, can be throwaway items now. That Dyson family of products, those things will last you many, many, many years, and they don't go on sale very often. So a couple hundred bucks off a, a Dyson little handheld is an amazing deal. So, we got through a few of the product categories, and we're just going to buzz through a few uh, of the families of devices. How are we doing on time? Good. Yeah. You've got half hour, yeah. I don't have enough material for half an hour. <laughs> but I'll try to stretch it. Oh, thank you. Um, and, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it calls from the crowd to stretch it out. Um, Probably our most popular brand that we sell on Best Buy. Uh, we have a great relationship, my company does, with Apple. Uh, we, they, we are able to sell things at prices that they don't even offer in their own Apple stores or uh, their website, apple.com. Um, we will probably sell 150 to 200 iPhones. Over that Black Friday weekend, we will probably sell MacBooks. They're up to 250 bucks off. Which again, if any of you guys shop or know Apple products, $250 off a MacBook is significant. Um, we will probably sell 100 of those over a three day period, which that is a lot of MacBooks going through my store. On an average week, we might sell 15. So we're going to sell 100 to 120 in three days. Um, Apple watches, again, we kind of touched on them when we were talking about some wearable technology. Another one, their previous version, the Series 3 Apple Watch, 50 bucks off. Any questions on any Apple stuff? They also own the headphones, Beats, 
don't buy the beets, they're garbage. And then we saw a couple of the earlier, earlier slide, excuse me, uh, some of the Samsung uh, TVs specifically, and then we saw a few sound bars. Uh, Samsung, again, one of our greatest partners. Next to Apple, we sell, Samsung is probably the, uh, the other biggest brand that we sell. And they stretch all over the store. You know, our, our number one selling appliances, say Samsung on them, our number one selling TVs, say Samsung on them. So a huge partnership with Samsung we have, and just a few of the items, a couple tablets, and I believe we're doing, what, $300, $200 off S9s. Um, in terms of the cell phones and how we purchase them, is everybody familiar with how the contract cell phones are purchased these days? No. Okay, so about three, four years ago, we did, everybody remembers, the two-year contract, right? And if you get a plump down a dollar, you'd have to sign a two-year deal to be a Verizon customer for the next two years. And they'd give you a phone that was maybe one generation old. You know, not the newest and latest and greatest, but that was a subsidized model of buying a phone. You know, those, those hardware devices, even at that time, they cost five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars. You would pay a dollar and you would end up paying for that device in your monthly bill over those two years. But they subsidize the cost up front to make it a little bit easier on the consumer to sell more phones, obviously. Uh, the entire cell phone industry, especially the contract cell phone industry, has got away, gotten away from that purchasing model to one that's called installment billing now. So instead of getting $700 subsidized on a phone purchase, you pay what's near the full price of the phone, they chop that up into payments and add it to your bill. Now, when they moved to this model of purchasing, they, they kind of lowered some of their plans, so they didn't, they didn't just add that on to what you already had. They shifted the prices of some of the plans to make it a little more palatable. The funny story about this is, but then, when it says save $200, so what that means to you is you save $200 off the full price of the phone, which means your monthly payment would be $8 less than it would have been had it been full price over 24 months. The funnier story about the cell phone industry and the changes it made in the way that it uh, sells you phones, on the subsidized model, when you sign the two-year contract, the data showed that people were upgrading their phones about every 26 months. So they would sign their two-year contract, you know, and obviously we've had smartphones, we know battery issues, operating system issues. Once you get through near to those two years, it almost forces you to upgrade the phone anyway. But the data showed that people were upgrading every 26 months. And the folks in the cell phone industry thought that if they moved to this installment billing function, they could set people's bills at a certain level, and that extra $27 a month that was on your bill that represented the cost of your phone to pay it off over time, that this would encourage people to trade in phones and upgrade more often. Well, since that time, the data has shown that what happens in, what happens is, once you get the phone paid off, your bill goes down. So what the industry didn't foresee was when people got cheaper bills, they wanted to keep the cheaper bill. They didn't want to come get a new phone and continue paying a higher price or continue paying for a device. So we have what was predicted to go get people to upgrade every 22 months. Now the average customer upgrades every 32 months. So they really shot themselves in the foot there. they going to change back then? No. Uh, the way so, uh, yeah, the question was, are they going to change back to their old two-year model? The answer is no. Um, what's going to happen and what is continuing to happen are people are just buying phones at full purchase price and choosing not to 
add a payment, an installment payment to their bills. Um, what that has done is that has caused the, uh, the industry, the providers, the Verizons and the AT&Ts, to force the hardware makers to make better mid-level phone products. So a lot of the phones that, that you know you always see advertised on TV, the Samsung Note 9 or the new iPhone 10s or 10s Max. I mean, these phones, if you get high memory, if you get a 512 gigabyte iPhone 10s Max, I said that right too. That was very impressive. That is a $1,450 phone, full retail, for the highest memory amount, the newest processor, and the biggest screen size. Nobody wants to pay $1,450. Some people do, but most people don't want to pay $1,450 for their phone, just to buy it. So what's happened is we've seen unlocked phones that can work across all cell phone carriers. They have... Um, Again, more company data. Five years ago, 98% of the phones that we sold that went on one of the major carriers, Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, or T-Mobile, 98% of the phones we sold were locked phones to that carrier. I mean, you bought this Samsung, it was gonna work on Verizon, you signed your two-year contract, did it, did it. So 98% through Best Buy. Um, and unlocked phones that you would just pay for out of your pocket up front and be able to use on any carrier, they represented less than 1% of the phones we sold. I think that share of unlocked phones in terms of what goes out the door each day in our buildings is near 15%. So a lot of folks, rather than buying a $1,450 phone, adding that extra 50 bucks a month to your plan, People are finding really, really, really good phones, be it Android and, and even some Apple options for $300, $400, plunking that down, and that phone is still lasting you three years, four years. So another thing that backfired from the cell phone companies trying to force people to buy $1,000 phones and add that number to their bill, they were forced to give consumers two, three, four hundred dollars options. Yes, sir. Um, that would be Google's cloud services that infect for your computer. <laughs> I did skip the Amazon slide too quickly. Uh, Fire tablets, so the, and these are the tablet, the tablet tablets, not the e-readers. The seven inch one, that's usually $50 retail, that'll be $30. Um, so those will be in the 30 to 40% off range. Um, in terms of gifting, the kids tablet that you see on the bottom right, that's just about half off. Those normally sell for $100 retail and comes with a very super duper kid friendly bumper on it. Um, yeah, those are those are half off. I believe the eight inch fire tablet so it normally sells for 80 retail, that'll be 50. And the 10 inch, which is a really nice one, 10 inch, 32 gig internal memory, which is 150 retail, will be 100 for most of the shopping season. So significant significant deals off on Amazon. And the, these will be the same prices that Amazon is selling them for. So again, remember in parentheses, come to my store to buy these. And then we have uh, just some of the Google family of products. Again, in, few, in a few of the other slides, we touched on some of these things. We saw the Chromecast earlier. Um, the Ultra is 20 bucks off for the 4K. The standard Chromecast is uh, 25 bucks off standard price. And then even, it's odd to see, but we all know Google as a search company, they're also 
they basically run Android. So they, that's their operating system. Um, on the top left, Sony Smart TV, basically running a Google branded suite. You know, they're, we said Smart TVs are Roku and Amazon, those are the operating systems that run the features of the TV. Uh, Google has a version of Android that lives in TVs now and they're partnered with Sony. So any Sony smart TV you buy is basically going to be running Google in the background. Okay, that was, uh, that was it for like all the product slides. Um, again, bestbuy.com, you can get to the, uh, you can get to that Black Friday ad. It's been up for several days now. Um, you can page through it, or you can also jump to sections. You can perform different sorts on items. So you do not want to sit through all 52 pages. You can literally search and narrow down and look for product categories in different price ranges so you can literally drill down through that ad and find things that are important to you or interesting to you yes sir i think i saw one slide that said free shipping is that just on certain things or are we going to all the things Everything yeah has free shipping. yeah and that, that's actually where we're going to go on this slide just a few notes about not the products but like the general shopping experience and the policies that are kind of surrounding it so a couple things to note Yes, ma'am. How does you how do you work that with the Google? Because it's a TV, Google's in there. You can search titles. What do you do when you search keyboard for it, or use your own keyboard? Uh, it does not come with a keyboard. Um, Google's representation there is more app related versus probably what you're used to in a traditional computing format. So. You would download apps from their Play Store as you would on a phone or tablet. Um, again, there are partner apps. So Sony is going to have a TV remote app that you can download on a tablet or phone that will enable you to type, per se, you know, enable you to search things. Most operating systems, most of the smart TVs, it is, it is directionally based. It is up, down, up, right. You're setting your menus that way. But to do any typing, again, and, and Google, it's, it's not their search function that lives in that TV, per se. You know, it's their offering of uh, music and movies. You can search their catalog uh, and play music and movies or buy them or rent them from Google. Um, but yeah, it's not, uh, the, their search offering is not the main function. Uh, on the smart TV. So it's like an up-down kind of thing, most. Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. Okay, so aside from the products, some of just kind of the fine print things and how shopping at Black Friday works at Best Buy and actually most retail too. You know, like we pretty much, retailers, Target, Walmart, we treat this event in this time of the year very similarly. Uh, Best Buy, we have a very liberal price match policy pretty much most of the rest of the year. I mean, if you come into my store and it's we're talking apples to apples, it's the exact same item. And you pull up a price from Target or Walmart or any reputable retailer per se, I will match that price for you. Uh, Black Friday, it doesn't work that way. We uh, Best Buy, we negotiate with our vendor partners specific deals that we can offer at Best Buy only at this time of year. And Walmart and Target and online retailers, they do the same thing. So this time of year, you will see a lot of exclusive deals to specific retailers. Because of that, those five days of our shopping event, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we do not price match any competitor prices. So if Target has something $2 cheaper than I have it, well, I probably have 20 other items, $5, $20 cheaper than they have it. So that is the one time of year where our very liberal price match policy is kind of, we put the brakes on it. 
And again, if you uh, if you really dug into the details about other retailers that match prices, you'll find uh, they're going to have a similar policy this time of year. Uh, return policy. Again, we're very friendly as are most retailers this time of year. If you've already bought in something, you still have till January 12th to return it. Opened, unopened, can't be broken. Can't return anything broken, but anything you've bought in since October 28th is part of what we consider our holiday return policy. So again, it takes kind of the concern away from gift giving. You know, if I give somebody a gift, do they have to run to the store on December 27th to avoid some kind of return policy? You know, we're going to extend that to January 12th. And again, I can speak for my store, we kind of view policy as a framework to make decisions. Uh, in my store, we try to take care of the customer's best interests, so we don't necessarily follow the policies 100% to the letter. An example is if you come on January 17th and you want to return something, there's a pretty good chance I'm going to return it for you. But yeah, we're, we're very open right now. January 12th is the date. Uh, the exceptions do apply. The biggest one, the biggest exception would be like the contract cell phones, right? We're in partnership with companies like Verizon and AT&T. If you sign a contract to purchase a phone and use their service, you know, their standard return policy is 14 days, so we kind of abide by that. But just about any other products, TVs, appliances, computers, that January 12th date applies for us. Uh, just like the other retailers, you know, we have financing deals, special for the holidays, 0% deals, um, works off our Best Buy credit card. And again, it's similar to every other retail, no interest financing deal. You miss a payment, you're late on a payment, that interest compounds all the way to the end of the deal. So again, Pay your bills on time, you're fine. If you don't, here comes the interest, right? And that's standard of every uh, branded uh, credit card. Free shipping. So we noted that earlier. Anything you order off bestbuy.com, come to the store, order for us to ship to your home. It's gonna be free throughout the entire holiday. Typically, we're free shipping $35 and up the rest of the year. But uh, if you want to buy a movie for $5 off bestbuy.com and have it shipped to your house, that's going to be free throughout the holidays. We touched on some of the rules of the doorbusters earlier. We talked about how we're going to ticket those items. So if somebody wants to come and stand outside and hang out, I might be one of the people out there passing out a ticket to you a couple hours before. couple of the slides, and I didn't call it out, but probably had some advertising around total tech support. Um, that is a membership service that we provide at Best Buy. Um, if you shopped with us before, specifically buying computers, you've probably been pitched to buy a tech support membership. This one is a little bit different. Most of the tech support memberships that Best Buy has sold in the past were strictly focused around computing. Cleaning up viruses, transferring data, you know, swapping out hard drives, things like that. Our tech support membership covers. Our total tech support literally covers about everything we sell in the building. Um, as an example, for if you buy the $200 membership, which is good for one year, Something like a, um, a mounting, mounting a TV in your house, our standard service fee for that is $200 with the membership, 50 bucks. Um, In-store services, cleaning up viruses, um, data transfer, even swapping out a fan, swapping out a hard drive, those are free services in-store now if you're a total tech support member. Um, and that would be uh, on up to three devices in your home. Uh, those calls get routed to Bruce's house. <laughs> that service is 500. <laughs> 500 US dollars. 
Bitcoin. Houses of gold. <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously, anybody who's ever bought anything at Best Buy, you probably had one of the one of my cashiers or sales associates come hard at you to buy the extended warranty, the heat spot protection plan. Um, a lot of folks actually do opt to buy that around the holidays because it is attached to the item. So if you are going to give a gift and you want it, you want to be assured and have a peace of mind that it's going to work for the next two years so that person can enjoy the gift. You can buy one of those extended warranties and it's not you know, attached to your name. It gets attached to the product and stays with the gift. So that's all I have, folks. Any thoughts, any questions? Yes, sir? Does my credit have been hacked? To the best of my knowledge, no. Now, in terms of the totem pole, or that, that information make it to my desk. But I mean, nothing, no major breaches, or again, something like that is going to make its way out. If it was truly something major, I would suspect we have all have heard about it, you know everyone just as quickly as me. But yeah, so then, to the best of my knowledge, we have, uh, we have not had a serious data breach of customer financials, customer data, anything like that. Well, thank you very much, folks. If you guys don't have any more questions, then I will uh, I will wrap up. Thank you.